Hello and welcome to the Livestreamer Backstage Podcast. Today I'm really excited to be talking with Dr. Efrain Lopez, aka Dr. Elo. Efrain is a doctor of management, a live streaming strategist, researcher, and consultant for B.Live. I asked him to come on to the show today because I've been really impressed by the consistency he has, not just with the initial content creation side of things, but with all of the promotion and repurposing of his content across all of the social platforms, all while juggling this with his full-time job and family life. We all know that we should be repurposing our content, <laughs> whether it's recorded or live streams, but few of us actually do this effectively. Uh, and it's certainly an area that I have not yet uh, got into a consistent flow with, but I'm working on it and I'm looking forward to learning a lot from Dr. Elo and uh, of course, sharing it with all of you too. So without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Elo. Hey Elo, it is absolutely wonderful to uh, have you here today. Oh, it's a blessing being here, man. Thank you very much. I'm super honored to be on your show. Thank you for having me. No, it's a pleasure. And uh, like I say, I'm, I'm here to learn myself. <laughs> um, so obviously, I've titled the uh, show Workflows for a Consistent uh, Content Creation and uh, Distribution. And so I do, do want to get into that because as I say, I've been uh, really impressed by uh, how you're doing all of that. But first, I'd like to just uh, get a bit more of an understanding of maybe you like your background and also your uh, origin yeah. story, if you will. How did you get into uh, to live streaming? So background, starting off, I'm um, from Puerto Rico. That's my, you know, where I was born. I was raised. I moved to the States uh, because uh, with the Coast Guard, right? Uh, been with the Coast Guard 18 years. I'm a reservist right now with them. I used to be active duty first. Now I work with the Department of Transportation. I'm a full-time full civilian, and I manage an office here in Washington, D.C. So I live in Hernan, Virginia, which is west of uh, Washington, D.C., about, well, depends on traffic, an hour, 30 <laughs> minutes, depends. So, um, yeah, I have a, a beautiful wife, beautiful kid. Uh, we were three. We're super happy where we at right now. And basically, I started off with uh, live streaming. Uh, I, I was a big fan. I still am, actually, from live streaming pros. Mm -hmm. Back where uh, David Foster and, and Luria was, they were together um, as Geek something. I can't remember Geek right Beat, now. Geek Beat, was it? Yeah. Geek Beat, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So all those episodes I've, I've watched, I've always been a fan, and found it myself, I found myself uh, watching um, live stream pros, already were live stream pros. And um, they got me as a, as a moderator and I, I started moderating for them. I learned the trade, I fell in love with live streaming. At first I started live streaming about sustainability, which is my doctor degree in. But I noticed really quick that I was burning myself out in between work and here talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I chose the passion that I had already discovered, which is live streaming, right? So I started doing streaming and then all of a sudden I'm doing this a lot more than I thought I would. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's kind of addictive, yeah? <laughs> it, it, it is actually. You get, you get a kind, kind of a high from it. Like mm -hmm. you get, it's really, it's really, in your, for me, it's the interaction with the public. It's, it's not about the, you know, the full video and all that stuff that mm -hmm. you watch afterwards. But for me, it's the, the being live in there and answering questions. And if I don't have an answer, I'll look it for you the next episode. I'm looking forward to that so I can answer your question. You know, the back and forth is really weird because it's not TV, uh, but at the same time, it's not a Zoom call. So mm -hmm. you're like right there in between uh, interacting through chat which is at first it was really awkward for me and now it's really natural. Like for me, inter interacting through um, LinkedIn like this, through chats and everything, it's easy. It's really mm -hmm. easy right now, but it yep. took me some time. And it took me leaders, took me a bunch of things until I finally got it and, and started talking without any, you know, <laughs> and words and ums and and yeah yeah sure and, and just yeah. you mentioned their um leader so that's uh, uh live every day in august and they have something Correct. similar in in april august well, and so. in april as well yeah yeah uh -huh. so uh, what was your experience of uh, of, of doing that because I, I did that last last year as well yeah i did two of them mm -hmm. um i did one as a moderator was one before being a moderator and another one as a moderator helping them out and moderating the group it was amazing mm -hmm. eye-opening you know um you have skills that you don't know you have wow like like the speaking gets really easy the looking at the lens it looks really easy the stuff that people need to practice you get that in one month how many times do you go um you know you can go 52 times uh, a year but you do once a week go live once a week 
That's not going to happen. You know, I'm not going to go live every week. Let's say you do go 40. Now, in one month, you have 30 right there. And then you can keep on building on what you have. And you'll get really easily um, talkative. You'll, you'll start talking really, really well online once you do a lead or two. So that's mm -hmm. what really caught my eye. That it was really... It was really good for me, at least for for my for with my experience. I think that's that's the one thing. Uh -huh. One of the things that struck me about uh, Leader when I did it as well is when I went into it, I kind of just thought that it was going to be the idea of just going live every day for a month. Uh, but actually, there's a real sort of structure to it that uh, Laurie and is. the live streaming pros team have put behind it, where um, they're actually really stretching you. You're not just going going live for the sake of it every day. There's a specific mission, and it's that that actually yeah. draws out the the whole sort of personal growth aspect of it. Um, exactly. So yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience. <laughs> and uh, so um, as you're now doing this uh, sort of on a, uh, on a, on a more regular basis, so how, how did that, that leader sort of influence uh, what you went on to do afterwards and how did it sort of shift your, your focus? Oh, it influenced everything because after that, I had the confidence. I started on September, 2020, started doing live stream every week. And um, I started making all kinds of mistakes. As always, I started ugly uh, until I started to get, you know, uh, the upgrades, the look and everything started learning. You just, you know, I, I'm, you're always learning, uh, sure. you know, in the process. So um, I started to perfect the trade little by little until I finally got a shot that I like. My wife did the background, which is amazing. Hey, so, really cool. um, yeah, I, I, I finally got something that I like and I stuck with it. Mm -hmm. So... Then comes be live and contacts me via messenger on, Hey, do you got, would you like to do some shows for us? And I was like, yeah, definitely. I'll do them for free. You know, I, I want to learn my trade while I'm, you know, I don't want to get money from something that I'm not a professional on it yet, but they mm -hmm. thought I was. So now after a year, they, I'm a consultant with them as well. I'm doing all types of stuff. I'm doing a, a show for them every week unless I'm on vacation, right? But at least four times mm -hmm. a, a month. Um, I'm doing other stuff with mentoring as well on the side. So it's, it has been a really great experience for me. And um, very, I, did, I never thought it would work in this, you know? Mm -hmm, sure. That I would get paid for doing, for, for talking all this gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> talking about so, something you love, talking tech. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. for me, it, it's, it, it feels like it's not work. It feels like it's just, you know, yeah. this is what I do on Tuesdays and Wednesdays every week. And um, these people are my community and I'm just talking to my friends. That's mm -hmm. basically what I think of it right now. Before that, I had a block, mental block on it. Oh, my God, there's millions of people watching me. No, there's not. There's millions of people, but they're watching other people as well. You're not yeah. the only one there. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that thing about oh, yeah, you, you have cool. the, the, the connection with the people through live streaming as well. That's the, the yeah. kind of takeaway that I've got from it as well. It, it doesn't feel like you're just making content that uh, is going out on video and, you know, it's, it's anonymous yeah, people watching it. You actually know who your audience is through, uh, through, Which through is live. Great. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, perhaps, you can talk a bit, perhaps you can talk a little, little bit more about um, uh, Be Live then, because you know that I'm a, uh, uh, a total Ecamm fanboy. And so that yeah, tends to be what I, I use you. for everything. But there are like lots of other platforms around. So um, perhaps you can explain, you know, what Be Live is and uh, sure. a, bit more, a bit more detail about sure, it. Be Live is, uh, it's a streaming platform. It's a cloud-based um, streaming platform. Ecamm is, it's, it's a software you download. Yeah. So um, we're more like, uh, if, if you put it into comparison, uh, we compare more with Restream or with uh, StreamYard. So mm -hmm. we're cloud-based. Uh, mm -hmm. The company is from Israel. Um, they had an amazing team, very, very hearted people. Um, and that's what I love about them. So the you can stream up to 10 people at the same time, obviously nine callers, one person. Uh, you can use multiple cameras. Like uh, I did an Amazon Live with four cameras not so long ago, uh, comparing the four cameras at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, you can put overlays as well. It has a... a uh, an area where there's like a, a an outline where you can write everything and it's right there on screen right oh, beside that's cool. you. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So it has a lot of stuff. We can do Amazon Live. We can do RTMP. We can do all kinds of stuff people are doing out there. Plus, we have the uh, a smart comments um, 
thing that actually takes uh, evaluates your comments on screen on on the chat and puts the most you know the most the best comments in there automatically and you don't have to touch it. Oh, that's interesting. That's really cool. That's and, some and, it, tech. <laughs> and it takes out the the bad comments as well. So mm -hmm. it is really good. We have a really great community. Um, I think it's 14,000 in, 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 in growing. Um, and we're ready to step into more stuff. We're, we're doing some mentoring now. So that's, I can't say completely what it is because obviously we're still working on it, uh -huh. but, um, we'll have some new stuff out there as well. And there's always a discount as well. Well, there's always a 30% there and 20% discount there. And yeah. you know, we're, we're very competitive with what we have and the company is always, always listening to the customer and uh, you know trying to make changes and things that the customer likes so mm -hmm. yeah that's that's what i use to um to do all my live streams from now on that's what i'm using Fantastic. and i do use ecam virtual camera right so you're taking the, the you're combining <laughs> the benefits of all of them taking the ecam virtual cam Correct. and taking it into be live but you get i mean one of the advantages Definitely. of uh, cloud-based um platforms is the sort of heavy lifting is being done on the the browser side exactly uh, or on the you know the, their server side uh, and then presumably, has that got something where, you know, if your internet connection drops, for example, then the stream continues and you can pick it up? Does it do something like that? It's, well, here's the funny part. I had that happen last week, I believe, or yeah, last week. And they have also have an app. They okay. have an iPhone app. iPhone, the, the Android. My stream fell out. Uh -huh. I went to the app kept on going with the stream and then changed the computer and put the stream back in there. Yep. It was amazing. Like I was like really surprised because usually you just lose it. That's yep. it. <laughs> it's pretty good to have that, uh, that sort of security. Cause I've had a, yeah, a couple, of, couple of failed uh, <laughs> streams before. So <laughs> you, oh, yeah. from, from my, my connection side of things, but yeah, good stuff. <laughs> I just want to take a moment to talk about Ecamm Live. This is the live production Mac software that we're using to live stream and record this podcast. In my opinion, it is the best live streaming and recording software on the market today. So what exactly does it do? Well, essentially, it allows you to control the content that you're including in your video, be it a live stream or a recorded video. And you do this by building out different scenes that contain the content that you want to show. This content may be a feed from your camera or indeed multiple cameras, or you may be sharing a screen, which is what I do a lot of in my tutorial style videos that I make for my Take One Tech YouTube channel. You can share the screen from a second computer or maybe even a gaming console if you are a live streaming gamer. And just as we are doing in this podcast, you can also bring in guests using Ecamm Live's built-in interview mode where guests can join from a browser and you can then incorporate their video and audio into your production. Finally, you can add all kinds of additional graphical and animated overlay elements and even movies to really add a level of branded professionalism that would be hard to achieve in any other way. The real magic happens though when you hit that record or go live button because then you are able to seamlessly switch back and forth between all of the scenes that you've created and indeed this is how all of the videos have been created for my Take One Tech YouTube channel and the reason it's called Take One Tech by the way is because all of the videos are made in one take with no edits. I just hit record, make the video and as soon as I hit the end recording button the file is there and ready to be uploaded straight to YouTube. What I love about Ecamm is not just the ease of use that it has when compared to other live streaming software, but also the greater flexibility it gives in terms of layouts and designs that you can create for your shows when compared to some of the hardware streaming solutions. And one thing that makes Ecamm great specifically for podcasts is the fact that it has the ability to record isolated audio tracks. So once we finish recording this podcast, I'll have a separate audio file for me, my guests, and any other audio tracks that have been a part of the recording. That makes the editing and repurposing of the content for the podcast so much more streamlined. It does have another little trick up its sleeve though, and that is its virtual camera feature. This allows you to take the video output from Ecamm live straight into communication apps like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Discord, and so on. This means that rather than just appearing in Zoom meetings with a regular camera feed, you can now show up with all of the amazing production values that Ecamm live gives you and deliver that straight into your Zoom meeting. And trust me, when you rock up to a Zoom meeting with Ecamm, <laughs> the other participants will be truly amazed. So whether for live 
live streaming, recorded video content, or to level up your Zoom game, I highly recommend you give Ecamm Live a go. You can get a free trial by going to takeonetech.io slash Ecamm. That's E C A double M. Takeonetech.io slash Ecamm. And of course, you can find a link to that in the show notes as well. You will certainly not regret giving it a go. Now let's get back to the show. So let's let's have a little uh, talk then about um about this workflow that you've got that you've uh, you've been, that you've you've developed and are you know no doubt still working on and tweaking but uh, as i say it's been something that uh, i'm just always seeing your your content your uh, adverts for upcoming streams but then uh, the repurposing of content and you just seem to have a really uh, a really consistent flow to it and as i say it's something that if you see any of my posts generally i've just literally posted them <laughs> so uh, i've not quite got there in terms of the uh, the full automation and, and repurposing so i'd love to hear more about how you've uh, structured all of that i first have to thank um obviously the one who actually put me in my place i had a consult with ash borland probably you know him right oh, of course yes yes so Ash, um, we had, I had a consult with him. He's like, man, what am I doing? What am I doing wrong here? It's like, you're not being consistent. This is what's going on. So I made a plan with him. And from there on, I've been posting almost, almost every single day. I do take like Saturdays and Sundays mostly off. And if I'm not taking that off, that means that if you see something, it's automated. Mm -hmm. So what I've used for the past four or five months is Agora Pulse. That's the, the, the software that I've been posting with. Mm -hmm. Now, behind all that, I wake up at six in the morning from Monday to Friday. So probably sometimes five, but usually I'm like six. I, the first thing I do is sit down at this computer. I already have figured out what I'm going to do the next day. Like if I had a live stream, I will take snippets of that live stream, leave them there, go in the morning. And in the morning, I start doing some editing on it, like mm -hmm. really light editing. It's not, you've seen them. It's really light. It's nothing that uh, you have to spend hours in. I spend five, six minutes with whatever I have. Put the, I have a template on Filmora X, which is Filmora 11, which is the one that I use for doing my editing. That's my editing software. Mm -hmm. So I have a, a template in there. I just throw it in there, change the colors from the background, and um, you know, do do whatever I need to do, and um, then export. After I export, I go to, um, what's the name of this? Uh, let me see here real quick, because I have it right here. So uh, Jasper, oh, Jasper, yes. sure, sure. or I have an alternative, which is um, Word Hero, mm -hmm. Word Hero. So, and that Word Hero is a one-time pay from AppSumo. So that's the, the, the version that you can afford, you, you're not, looking to break the bank, that's the one word hero. If you have enough money for every single month, like a $30 thing, you got Jasper. So I use one of both. And I put the topic in there, start developing something that the AI gives me and I and I make all the corrective things that I want. And I basically make it mine, right? Mm -hmm. Make that thing mine. I don't want it to just copy and paste and show people the robotic part of me because that's not me. I want to show that it's me. So that's where I get the blurb. I get um, the hashtags from from there as well with the keywords that I put. And after that, I go to Agora Polls. If you are willing to pay $100 a month for a program that it's amazing, that's Agora Polls. That's how you start with it. If not, you have Radar. R-A-D-A-A-R. That's from AppSumo as well. Bought it for 59 bucks. It does exactly the same. Probably you have to, you know, not as easy as Agora Pulse, but you have options as well for people that are not, not looking to break the bank, right? Mm -hmm. So I've used both of them to um, basically, that's my social media manager. So I put thumbnails in there if I have, and my thumbnails are really easy. What I do is that I take a picture of the video and put it, that picture, I put it in, in, at the front of the video when I'm mm -hmm. editing. And that's the still, that's the image that they, you know, the, the software will take Got because you. it always reverts the first part. Sure. So, you know, I put it really thin in there, mm -hmm. really thin, put it in there, put some words on top of it, the topic, that's it. Uh, so I don't have to do a thumbnail. Mm -hmm. And because I'm repurposing and I'm using it for every platform, I use everything in one by one. Mm -hmm. One by one, 
Instagram, and then I distribute to everything because it, it adapts, right? And basically after that, I schedule um, whatever I'm going to have at 7 in the morning or if I'm going to do at 9 o'clock in the morning. It depends on the day, um, what type of content I'm, um, I'm, you know, I'm pushing out there. And the other thing is I also put my live streams 30 minutes before or an hour, depending on the live stream. Um, I'll do it through Agora Pulse or Raider as well. I'll put mm -hmm. it with the social media manager and it will automatically populate uh, 30 minutes or 45, whatever I chose for that one. Mm -hmm. It will populate, you know, to the different platforms. What I like about Radar is that it has TikTok in there. Ah, cool. And, and TikTok, nobody has it but, but them for now that I know of that it works well. Uh, for the other ones, uh, like for uh, Agora Pulse and for the other platforms, it works amazing. You know, and I do this every single morning. Um, obviously, I was on vacation. I just came back. You haven't seen probably some posts during those days because when I say I'll take a vacation, I just shut off everything. So, <laughs> so I've learned I learned my lesson about burnouts. So I take off and I don't I don't even check anything out. So my cell phone was for the last five days I was in the beach. My cell phone was in in a pocket in the bag, my wife's bag. That's where it was. Mm -hmm. So basically that's what I do. That's what I do every single day. It's, uh, it takes discipline. It takes a lot of, uh, iteration, repetition, repetition until you get used to it. The first thing that I do is brush my teeth and come and create. Mm -hmm. That's basically what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's similar to my part is that get up and the, my content creation is in the morning. Uh, it's, it's the, all the rest of the stuff that you're doing <laughs> with the scheduling that I've got to, got to work on. But I, I, I find that my most creative time is like in the morning and, uh, I don't know, yeah. you've, you've got a uh, family as well. I don't know if you find that it's the quietest time in the house as well. <laughs> oh yeah. And I'm a military man, so I'm up already. So yeah, it doesn't yeah. really matter. I'm up. Even uh -huh. if I'm on bed, just with my eyes like that, just open. Yeah. <laughs> I'm up. Uh -huh. And you mentioned about the, um, like the software you're using to actually manage the posts. I'm just, I've always got a bit of a uh, productivity angle on, on things. Do you use a specific yeah. task manager as well for just other general stuff? I mean, we're talking about live streaming, not necessarily yes, productivity, but what, what yes, do you I use do. for that? I use ClickUp. Um, that's where I have everything. That's where I throw, that's my idea bank. That's the, where I have all my, you know, A, B, C, D, E. I have everything. All my workflows are in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and Evie, ask Evie, you know her mm -hmm. as well, right? Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. So she's my mentor uh, with this type of uh, uh, software. She's the one that basically showed me how to use it. Right. And that's what I do. And it has automations and re reminders that I get by email. You know, everything's automated. Everything is automated. My posts, my reminders, my calendars, mm -hmm. everything I have it in there. So I can get reminders um, whenever I need to be in this desk creating. So yeah. I've made it. But it's taking time, it's mm -hmm. taking time and it's taking a lot of, um, let's put it out there, um, a lot of my part to actually do it because mm -hmm. the first couple of weeks I was like, yeah, a little later, <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know, hard to build a know, routine. <laughs> yeah. The procrastination uh -huh. comes in until you build it. And once you build it, you feel strange and you feel like, uh, I should be doing something now. Oh, mm -hmm. look at your email or whatever. Here it is. So boom. It's uh, it's been, it's been, uh, uh, let's put it this way. It's been a, a really hard habit to get into, mm -hmm. but once you get into it, 10 weeks in it, I was just doing things automatically without mm -hmm. even looking at my phone or click up. Yep. <laughs> uh -huh. And how long would you say it's taken to, uh, you know, when, when did you first start developing this, this process and how long has it, it gone for now? And also where would you see that there is, um, you know, what are you still looking to improve on with it? If, if, if anything, where, where do you see it going? It's taking time. It's taking time because you always try to perfect your stuff. So let's, let's say I develop it in two weeks because mm -hmm. I was obsessed with it. Right. Right. At the time. Mm -hmm. But I kept on, you know, looking at stuff that I could add stuff that it wasn't working. Like there's, there's some, I can't get stuff three times. If I get stuff three times, I get mad, won't do it. So like, like emails and automations like that. So I kept it to one, kept it to like 555. So when I was up, that was the first thing that I saw. It takes time and mm -hmm. you, you will always be changing and evolving the, the, sure. the process. That's, that's the way it works. Right. 
of trying to make something that is very sustainable, but at the same time, it will change for it to remain sustainable. Mm -hmm. And there's no, there's no way things are going to remain the same all the time. So it, it's a, it's, it's put as a live, like a live document sure. that you have in there that it's, it's going to continue to grow and continue to, um, adapt to your, to your schedule. For me, my family's first, mm -hmm. uh, my family's first. I only do content on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Uh, for live streaming and then the other ones, because they're always, you know, they're sleeping at six in the morning, of course. So that's the time that I take to do my stuff. Now you won't see me doing anything apart from podcasts and, uh, you know, I'm, I have a podcast on Friday as well. That I've been invited stuff like that. Of course I'll do it, but guess what a time I'm doing it. I'm doing it like at four and my kid is gets out of school at four and while he comes and they comes in the bus, my wife picks him up. All that stuff, I'm done with the podcast. So I, I'm really, I'm really cringy about the times that I sure. use. Um, so I don't, so I don't get into my family's time. But uh, it will take you time. It will take you time and discipline to do it. If you're using ClickUp, using a Word document, using you know Apple Notes, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you're using in reality. Just know that you need to follow it, and it will change a lot. That's it. Mm -hmm. Great, great advice. I mean, I use um, uh, OmniFocus for my task management, but uh, OmniFocus yeah, is cool. I I just need to actually <laughs> assign some more of these sort of tasks to it. I think that's all. Um, yeah, now, you, it's, you, you it's normal, man. Believe me. <laughs> you mentioned about um, uh, TikTok earlier, though, and like how um, uh, yeah. the that platform will uh, that pro application will post to uh, TikTok. I'm just wondering about how um, how you treat the different um, different platforms as well, because obviously there's different audiences on them and uh you know how how do you decide which to go on and also which you know what to post where basically i post everything in the same place that's mm -hmm. it um for me i'm not gonna be dancing on TikTok and doing stuff <laughs> like that it's, it's just not me right yeah i, I also work for the federal government i don't want to uh -huh. be seen doing stuff like that as well uh -huh. so um i do um like sh shorts um short type of, of snippet of information yep. that can you digest in less than 30 seconds. I'll do those on TikTok and they work really well. That's, uh, you know, I, I just, I, can, I don't see myself doing that type of content outside and, you know, maybe some interviews on people of video that I'm, mm -hmm. I'll be there. Are you going to go in there? People of video? Uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not coming in. It's a little bit far away from me, but uh, I'll be watching <laughs> from where I am. Yeah. Far away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm going there. So there, maybe I'll, I'll do some interviews, like, like, like yeah. some small questions, something. But in reality, my main platform, um, other than YouTube, is mm -hmm. LinkedIn. Right, That's right. what I do a lot. So uh -huh. different content. Yeah, but sure. yes, I repurpose everything and use it for every platform because people need to learn about live streaming in every platform. It doesn't differentiate, you know, the, this whole... The whole being in focus, the whole being, you know, on a good microphone, good camera, all that stuff. It's basically all the same, just different type of tech. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, so maybe we could uh, talk a little bit about um, then the, the setup you've got since you mentioned at tech. And I know that uh, <laughs> one of your big uh, uh, slogans is F the tech. <laughs> oh, yeah. In, uh, there's a big part of your uh, merch has got that uh, branded. I know you've got some new stuff there that I haven't actually seen. So uh, let me just bring this up a second. But You know uh, why it's F the tech, right? Yeah. <laughs> for, F the for, tech is basically when you're going to start, if you just start with what you have, yeah. forget the tech, just start as simple as possible. That's uh -huh. basically what I say. It, it's such sound advice that is because too many people get caught up in the whole, the gas, you know, gear acquisition syndrome. And I, I, I think that's fine if you are on a path and you're still doing stuff, <laughs> but it, it's when it's when it holds you back though. Like, you know, like, yeah, this is your, exactly. whole, your whole ethos. I mean, too many people feel like, whoops, Daisy, too many people feel like they've got to have that uh, new thing before they get going. And so, yeah, I really, uh, I really resonate with that. <laughs> that was a small only... story yeah. happened to me. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife was the first one that told me I had a, well, of course, everybody has a Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> I had a webcam. I had all type of stuff. Uh -huh. And my wife looks at me. It's like, when are you going to do something with it? I'm like, uh -huh. huh? What? It's like, yeah, you haven't gone live. So why are you buying all this stuff? You aren't going live. Got me naked. Mm -hmm. So yeah, basically, uh, that's when I started. 
and 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 said, you know what? People need to learn about all this stuff that you don't need to have the best tech in the world to deliver a message. Mm-hmm. The message has more weight than anything else, than any of this tech. The message has more weight. So yeah, that 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 taught me that have the tech, let's go with it. Mm-hmm. So what was the uh, the first uh, the first sort of tech that you bought for live streaming, and and how far did it go before you ended up uh, actually going live for the first time? And what were you using using back then? I, I bought a Yeti. Like mm-hmm. if it was a you know, oh wow, I went to Best Buy, bought a Yeti. <laughs> you know, Best Buy is a store that we have here. It's a tech sure. store, so mm-hmm. bought it and took almost a year. That uh-huh. thing was a paperweight. Right. <laughs> Not even the camera. The camera, I bought it afterwards. I thought about a C9, C920. Mm-hmm. I bought it like six months afterwards. Didn't do anything with it. Um, yeah, it was really hard to talk to the, to the lens. It was really mm-hmm. hard to talk to the lens. I can't, I can't, you know, I can't lie. Mm-hmm. But uh, here comes Lita and here comes being a moderator for live streaming pros. And that's what snapped, you know, my, my brain, you know, came around and, and understood what I was doing and, and why what, why I was doing it mm-hmm. and the passion and all that stuff. And just, I started and I started ugly. People, they need to go, go back to my channel and go look at the old videos. Stuttered, said the wrong words, talked to you in Spanish because Spanish is my first language. <laughs> you know, uh, I sweat it. All, every, I passed through everything. Mm-hmm. I passed through everything. And the only thing that made me better is iteration doing it a hundred thousand times Uh that's it not the microphone not the camera this is additions for whenever you get proficient get whatever you want but yeah that's it you have to tag (laughs) (laughs) um so in terms of um like then was that the leader last year or was that uh, which which year was that no that was now 2019 that was 2019 Uh um before the pandemic and then entering the pandemic i was ready to do my thing so 2018 2019 let's put it that way right right um from august uh, from april 2018 all the way to the next year and then i just in september i just started spilling the beans Uh yeah september 2020 and and how's your setup changed since then then so how how's it sort of evolved over over the time i can pull up horrible uh, horrible uh, (laughs) it's it's changed my friend it's changed Uh so much so i can actually i can actually show you right now if you want me to yeah sure like, oh, well you have yeah i've, I've got the I picture but if you want to show me live that's uh, that's cool we can do that like that whichever you yeah the picture's do. fine uh-huh. all right so here we go so i can actually show you what do i have right so i have here you know the this is a uh one one of several microphones that i have obviously this is the uh the rockout the Pod, pod mic. Oh my God. Pod mic. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so here's the pod mic. I have the Elgato um, low profile arm. Mm-hmm. Then I have two monitors. These two monitors are LG monitors. They're um, 24, I believe. Um, they're gaming monitors. So they're pretty good refresh rates 144. I got the Rocaster Pro 2. Before mm-hmm. that, I had the one. Then I have over here. I have in this part right here, um, the stream deck and the black magic design. This is the ATEM. I'm blanking out. I don't know why. ATEM mini. Thank you Mm -hmm. so much. Yeah, I'm blanking out. I don't know why. Um, I'm using a MacBook Pro right now. Then I have this microphone right here. This microphone is a um, a NT5. The NT5. This is a Rode NT5. So this is great for, you know, uh, when I do my videos and everything, or I, I just don't feel like using the microphone. Mm-hmm. This is the CVE low, <clears throat> sorry, CVE 10 <laughs> <laughs> with the uh, uh, 16 millimeter um, uh, Sigma, Sigma lens. Uh-huh. That's the one that I have right there. Then let me see if I can actually change this a little bit so you can see I got a teleprompter up there. Mm hmm. Um, all of my lights are Gato. This is a ring light. I have a, a key light air you know, on the side that lights, mm-hmm. you know, the right side of me. And that's basically it, man. I have a, I have more stuff that you can probably see um, here from the back. Oh, I didn't turn it on. 
Yeah, let me see if I can turn it on real quick. Shall I just uh, stick this other picture up for the time being? But um, uh, yeah, the um, uh, one of one of the things when I had a look at your uh, gear list was uh, the list of microphones that you've uh, you use or you've you've used. Is uh, <laughs> you've done quite an exhaustive study. <laughs> Yeah, I got a bunch of microphones, but this is the one that everybody tells me that my voice is good on uh -huh. for some reason. So here's um, right here on the top, I have a, a, a green screen and got the green screen that I can take out. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, let me show it real quick. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're really good. Oh, yeah, the, uh, that, those that uh, drop down ones. Yeah, it's great. It goes all the way, um, goes all the way down. Um, you have a monitor that you can see back there. Um, you have more lights on the right. You have a, I have a PC over here, which is PC is turned off right now. I'm using my Mac. Uh, this is the CV one uh, with the how do you call it with the 24 millimeter. Um, let's see the brand here. The, the 52 millimeter wide angle lens. Uh -huh. From Ulanzi, that's the one that I have. And then I have another desk over here, which is my work desk. And I have a 49 inch monitor there that's right below the camera and a standing desk. And this desk is from Ikea. It's a, actually is a kitchen um, table, not a table, a kitchen countertop. Yep. With, uh, you know, with two cabinets on the bottom holding it. So. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, man. I'm just, you know, I've done so many changes to this, um, to the studio little by little, nothing has come that I went to, you know, to a store and bought $25,000 of stuff. Uh -huh. Nothing, nothing happens like that. At least not in my world. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> I think you, you need time to sort of adjust to get used to certain things as well. And then as soon as you do, there's some other yep. use case that comes up. It's like just to do this podcast, I've kind of reorganized everything for the, yeah. you know, my desk. So there's always uh, new things, uh, new things coming about, <laughs> and microphones. Obviously, you know the, yep. the Rode microphones, and I use the Shure mm -hmm. small microphones as well. Um, my, not microphone headphones, so right, non see through. So yeah, yeah, uh -huh. and a lot uh, of tech. How how have you been using the uh, tech? I mean, we've all been on Zoom calls <laughs> the past few years, probably more than. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. the time that we were before. Um, and so how have you found that? You know, one of the things I do is obviously I've got this um, thing that's all about Zoom and teaching people how to be better on Zoom. And uh, I'm sure that when you rock up with your setup on any Zoom call, <laughs> you're going to... My eyes twitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cat. I'm a cat. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a cat, sir. <laughs> it's really so, hard. So um, they, everybody tells me basically, wow, how do you get that set up? It's like I'm using the... I got the face cam mm -hmm. well, with a Yeti. I, I use the Yeti not because it sounds good. I use the Yeti because it has double mute. So there's no way I can mess up in a meeting. Mm. How, how do you mean <laughs> du du double mute? What do you mean by that? You have mechanical mute uh -huh. and then you have the mute that you can put on the, on the, on the zoom call. So oh, I, I put mute on the zoom call and right, then you right. have that mechanical button. That's yep. the best thing that's ever happened right. for me, <laughs> for meetings at least. Yeah. So I keep that like that just in case. And, I'd rather being told you're on mute that, uh, what did you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, and so uh, how about the other people like, you know, in your, when your, your sort of corporate life, when you're uh, speaking to people, how, do you, um, do you give like consultations and things like that to people? Do you get asked for, by people for, for that kind of thing in terms of, Hey, how can we look like you? <laughs> I get asked, but they don't really care because it's a government computer. So ah, there's see, nothing right. you can do about it. So, uh -huh. you know, you could get a cam get a camera and get a microphone. That's that's as much as you can do to improve the 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 look or the sound. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people the judges are not willing to do it, which is fine. Now on the on the consulting side, yeah, everybody you know, whenever they do a consult and they hey, how can I get clear sound? How can I get your look? Mm -hmm. Which that's almost always like they say. And um help them out, help them out, do a consult. Uh, I've practiced with people one-on-one -on -one as well, because I know the value of practicing. And I've reminded people that we've been doing this since 2020. Mm -hmm. Since 2020, we've been doing, you know, Zoom calls with family. So you, it's not that you don't have experience doing it, it's that you don't have experience talking to people that you don't know. 
Mm -hmm. That's basically it. You know, a Zoom call, uh, a call on your iPhone with your with your mom, um, video call. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. It's the same principles. Just you know, just get used to it and keep on doing it, and don't think about all the people that are watching out out there. So yeah, I try to remind people that. Uh -huh. And just coming back to your uh, your setup, just one second. What would you say would be yeah. the uh, your your sort of favorite bit of tech that you've got on your? Uh, your oh, you know what it is. <laughs> I, I think I do know. <laughs> I've been I've been watching your videos and making comments on it too. So <laughs> <laughs> learning my way because I, I've learned my way a lot on it. But this is you have some you have some great videos because they go detailed. So oh, thank you. There's some stuff that I've learned. So watch his videos on Rockcaster Pro Two. <laughs> that that's it. Yeah, it is just uh, it is quite a, quite an amazing piece of uh, technology and, it is. and what, a it, lot of stuff. what it sort of opens up up to us and uh, and so how are you using do you use that for um uh, obviously for your for your live streaming do, are you going into your zoom calls with that are you doing any other sort of uh, uh, if it's consultancy any... based mm -hmm. i do it if it's from government work obviously i use my government computer right right i mm -hmm. stick to that but uh -huh. i don't put any any type of tech other than a microphone and the, and the camera on that because it's not allowed anyways uh -huh. so yeah and with the uh, consultancy that you do there, what sort of um, what sort of things do you cover there? If people um, want to go over to, uh, so I've got your website. All this, by the way, will be linked in the uh, the show notes for those yeah, uh, listening that. and watching on the uh, the replay. But if I just come over to uh, here, you can obviously go and uh, book awesome. an appointment. So, what sort of stuff do you uh, do you help people with over there? So I help people with setups. I help people with uh, speaking, with uh, ideas of of you know how to do your live stream, to what platform. Um, you know, I, I help people one-on-one -on -one as well to practice live streaming mm -hmm. on on YouTube, but, you know, not private YouTube. So people can start getting into it and start, you know, developing. I, I'll help you do an outline. Everything that you can think about live streaming, I can help you out. And tech-wise, tech yeah, of course. I definitely do anything that's tech-wise. And if you're near enough, like uh, my friend uh, down in, in Maryland, that I can drive there, I can help you do a setup as well. Mm -hmm. Go in there and basically build you a setup and leave you, you know, with, with leave you in good hands. So you can have a perfectly sounding and looking live stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a, a big thing for uh, people is just they want that sort of uh, turnkey solution so that they can just uh, yeah. get out there and do it without having to worry about all of the uh, the setup. So nothing wrong with that. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. There's people that that do themselves. There's people that pay for stuff. And that's that's why everybody, you know, that's why we all have jobs. So it's it's all good. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cool stuff. Um, so tell us about something that, um, like maybe what is a book that you've read that has helped you on your journey? I do always like to get that. I already know the answer to this, obviously, because I asked you in advance, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll just highlight it. I'm always keen to know what you know people are reading and uh, how it sort of influenced them or how, how it's impacted what uh, what they're doing uh, right now. Um, the art, the subtle art of not giving an F. Yeah. So... <laughs> For me, that book, what it did is that uh, it basically showed me that nothing um, really is important unless you make it important. Mm -hmm. So um, no matter how many times you try, um, I'm a person that makes, I make a lot of mistakes. And I've been like this since I'm little. Like I've been one of those guys that have to do things two or three times to get it done. Mm -hmm. And I've got accustomed to um, fail. I've got used to fail. That mm -hmm. that's, that's the reason that, that, that I've, gone and and probably i finished my doctor's degree i finished you know i did everything everything and i failed on it it's not i failed in one class you know research class i failed it and nothing it doesn't matter why does it matter i just took the learning process that i had the learning from it um from failing in there and next next class i killed it so basically this book showed me exactly how to handle um you know, the, the stuff that you don't like, you know, just, Hey, Vaseline, keep on going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's basically it. That's uh, what I've learned from it. Just let stuff go, learn from it and just move forward. That's basically what I do with every single thing. And, um, before I used to get mad, I'm like, now, like I'm, I expect to fail. So when I don't fail, I get surprised. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. 
<laughs> well, it's, that's when we learn most, isn't it? It's from the things that, yeah, uh, yeah from from our mistakes. And uh, I know I've made more, more than my fair share as well. <laughs> and that's always and okay. my approach as well is, you know, look what we can learn from the uh, the things that have happened. And then, uh, you know, it's it's the way that we uh, the grow grow the fastest. There's no good or bad situations. It's just situations. It mm-hmm. depends on what you do with it. Mm-hmm. So t- tell us a little bit more about the uh, the book then, because it's uh, I haven't actually read it. It's uh, it's one of those ones that's on my list, but I've not uh, not read it. So so that Maybe. book gives you a lot of a lot of situations of of you know there's there's a lot of stories in there that basically gives you you know what uh, this is this situation this happened and this is the example of this and this is what um. You know, don't say F to everything in life, just to the unimportant things. That's mm-hmm. that's the, the key um, message that he's trying to send. Right. Like stuff like, you know, stuff with your family. Don't say F to that. Mm-hmm. Just say F to stuff that really doesn't matter if you do it two or three times. Mm-hmm. That's basically what it is. So uh, don't give a F about adversity. Uh, you must first care about something more important than that, that adversity. So... That type of message throughout the book with uh, with stories, I was really amazing. It was fun to listen to as well. Mm-hmm. And, and what are you what are you listening to right now? What's something that you're reading right at the moment? Right now, the or YouTube formula from Daryl Daryl Eves. So I'm I'm listening to that one again. Yeah, um, I was just about to say I need to listen to that one again. I listen to that and <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And are, there, are you so any the good uh, sort of content creation uh, books as well that are related to this sort of stuff or? I think that's the only one that I have right now. I'm I am doing um one from my friend from Andrew Borst. He's another content creator, the income booster. Oh, right. Like uh, this is a um, hundred businesses. You can start from home and ditch the nine to five. So I'm I'm reading. I, I just got it yesterday, which it was amazing. He just he gave me a signed copy. Oh, fantastic! Great. Uh-huh. So I'm just gonna start to read this one. Um. Well, I started yesterday a little bit, but I can't say I've read two pages. So, mm-hmm. yeah, eight hour drive yesterday. So, uh-huh. um, I'm gonna start to see that one to see what what can I learn from it. So, uh-huh. I'm sure I can learn a bunch of it from it. So, and that's that's a, you just mentioned about ditching the nine to five. How would you see the uh, the nine to five and your content creation going? Do you see more of a uh, you know, do you want to do more of the content creation or cause I, I'm just speaking from my, myself just recently, we were talking just before, uh, before we went mm-hmm. live and uh, I've sort of been starting to carve out more time for the content creation side of things. Um, you know, for, with the, 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 the stuff that I generally do day to day. So I'm, I'm allocating more time to it just cause I found that, uh, and I've kind of mentioned at the beginning about live streaming being a bit addictive. <laughs> I found that it is. the, the it content is. creation in general my sort of um when my mind would wander i found it was always wandering towards the content creation <laughs> and so i was thinking well there, there's probably a little subtle message in there for me <laughs> so i'm wondering how well, you for feel me that. for me it's different um i'm a career uh, federal employee i'm a mm-hmm. career military so once i finish my time then i can jump in and do you know whatever i want but right mm-hmm. now i have a, a a career that i need mm-hmm. to finish i have a, a you know a a retirement plan already that I'm right. working on and it's sure. halfway through. So uh-huh. if I don't finish that, it will be a disadvantage for my family and of for course, myself. Yeah. Uh-huh. I work hard for this. So uh-huh. uh, once I finish all of all of the, the federal stuff that I have to do, I'll definitely jump in and, and, and I have plans to write a book as well and, you know, stuff like that. But right now I'm very happy doing what I do in the time that I have. Yeah. And I don't think I won't invest more time that I am investing right now. Because mm-hmm. if not, I will get into my cut into my family time. Sure, sure. So yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. I'm earning good money from content creation on the side, which gives me um, stuff to buy. <laughs> which is amazing. The excuse to <laughs> indulge in the uh, the love of tech. Yeah, <laughs> they can't tell me no. You can't buy that. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can because uh-huh. I pay for it with my work. Uh-huh. So um, I think after I don't know ten years from now when I'm retired from at least for the federal. Um, I can start doing more stuff, but for now, I think I'm good. I'm in a good spot, and I like where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned earlier about streaming to uh, fa- uh, Facebook, uh, sorry, to uh, YouTube and uh, to LinkedIn. Are you doing stuff on mm-hmm. Amazon at the moment as well? I am. I am yeah. uh, have an Amazon shop as well, but um, I haven't done much with it uh, because I've been on travel. 
Yeah. And I got like accepted before I started doing all the all the traveling. Right. But right. um yeah, I plan to do more on Amazon Lives and um hopefully I those I will be doing on Saturday mornings. Right, right. Uh, really early, um Saturday morning, nine or eight or something like that. Mm -hmm. And because I can't sleep anyway. So while yep. the others are sleeping, <laughs> I can do something. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so what's that uh, sort of show going to be focused on? Is what, what are you going to be doing? Focusing on live streaming tech. That's what mm -hmm. I that's what I love to do. That's what I love to talk about. I have it all already. So might as well just talk about it and sell it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, that's what I'm doing. Obviously, this is streamed live to, to Amazon. And then I do one on a uh, Sunday, Sunday, the Sunday session where I basically do like a deep dive tutorial on something. Uh, so it's just focused on uh, one product, but yeah, I'm also looking to do uh, something similar on uh, Amazon, but I'm yeah. still very much a newbie and uh, finding my way around the, uh, the Amazon, <laughs> the Amazon ecosystem. Aren't we if you all? Like. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm also I, doing a show with, for B live with, with in, on Amazon live on Mondays. So I, oh, right. I do that okay. as well. Uh -huh. What's, what's that show uh, about? That show is about live streaming tech. Definitely. Uh, do we have, uh, Three B Live on consultants uh, and the CEO, uh -huh. uh, three or four actually depends on the time. And on Mondays, one thirty p.m. Eastern time, we're talking about the tech that we use, our favorite tech, the tech that you can use for starting a live stream. Mm -hmm. So it's all uh, on focus on live stream as well. And I I am doing that consistently. Right, right. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a really interesting platform, and I think a lot of people think about um. You know, Amazon has been a shopping platform, uh, but I think there is uh, definitely room to be doing well shows like this, shows oh, yeah. like your show, and that's um, a little bit different. So that it's actually bringing people in, not it's just evolving. there for. Yeah, I mean, I, I always had this idea of it being kind of like a QVC <laughs> shopping channel type. Exactly styling. what I say. That's yeah. exactly what I say. QVC, uh -huh. but you, you don't have to call anymore. You're right there on your your computer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. ain't this ain't your grandma's shopping, you know, channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One one of the things that I've got to get more into in uh, in Amazon as well is the the shoppable videos. I mean, this is obviously a live streaming podcast, but yeah, certainly a, the whole other side of Amazon is creating the the videos that are product videos, reviews, and things like that. So uh, I am bad with videos, man. That's the only thing that you, if you're you're so good with videos and consistent, if we switch or we learn <laughs> from each other, uh -huh. we should be rocking it because I I I just videos for me they they're time consuming. So right. live streams for me. Probably it'll be easier and I can actually live with it. So that's you, why I haven't done so many videos unless I do some tech videos, reviews. Uh -huh. Well, do you know the thing that I've kind of um, struggled with a little bit or just haven't got over myself with is for Amazon videos. My uh, my videos on my YouTube channel tend to be about, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes and they're tutorial videos. And I'm just kind of speaking naturally as if I was talking to, you know, teaching a friend or something You're not like rushed. That. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> that's not good when I'm trying to do a two or three minute shoppable video on amazon oh, and like the, the first one that i recorded was 15 minutes long and i thought that's way too long they need to be a lot more <laughs> snappy than that and one thing i don't seem to be able to do very well is snappy <laughs> so i've got to, i've got to work on that work on that skill a little bit more <laughs> oh man but <laughs> it's it's all a learning experience i love that i love the whole it, the, it is, the it whole is. process of you know learning all this i mean that that's why i'm i think i'm so enthusiastic about it it's just because it's a new skill to learn and uh, you're you're the same, very uh, open to learning new things and teachable, and it's, yeah. it's just an exciting thing to be involved in. Just tell somebody um, that cuts his grass in 20 minutes to cut it in three, uh -huh. and then you'll know. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so what's in terms of the uh, like the future then from, uh, obviously you've not going to be turning full time to uh, content creation, but uh, in terms of like the, how you want your the things you're doing to evolve, where where do you see you you sort of taking things going forward, and uh, what you're most excited about at the moment? I see myself uh, uh, doing more consulting. I love mm -hmm. helping people, so I like uh, uh, probably in the in the backside of the live stream, mm -hmm. um, doing more consulting, helping more people go live, helping more people get noticed, uh, get better cameras, get better looks, get better microphones, get a better, you know, a better sound. I see myself doing a lot of consulting doing on during in the background. And I'm and I'm no, I'm going to do some stuff with be live. That's already uh, had a conversation with the CEO today, mm -hmm. that we're going to do some more stuff. Um, but I know that in the consulting side as well, uh, I'm able to help more people. And that's what I want. That's how that's what makes me feel good helping others. Mm -hmm. uh, helping others achieve what I achieved 
um, uh, during my time with live streaming pros and, and, you know, learning with be live and all that stuff. I just want to help people how to look and sound better and be more presentable on camera. So as I always say, um, I want to help those who want to be more comfortable on camera. That's basically my slogan. You want to be more comfortable? Hey, come on over. I'll, I'll set up some time and we can do a one-on-one -on -one and I'll show you exactly what I've learned and how I have, you know, um, getting better of what I do because I've, I started ugly. I always say I started ugly and I'm turning into a butterfly little by little. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm with you on that journey as well. <laughs> yeah, man. That's, it's all about the, those, those, those little steps. People think that you have need to get, take big gaps. No, just little by little. 2% better every single day. By the end of the year, you're double the percentage that you were thinking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so, so someone who's sort of starting out with, uh, with live streaming and getting themselves set up, what's uh, the sort of one little uh, gem of information that you'd like to pass on to them? What's the, the, the one thing that you wish you'd thought of or, or done differently when you, uh, you started out? What's the best, best advice you could I would have liked, I would have liked that I had uh, in my, in my, you know, in my mindset was that I have hours and hours and maybe days of experience already doing this. Um, all those Zoom calls, all those FaceTime calls you've done with people, you've already been on camera. You already have been comfortable with cameras. So that means that you're already comfortable in front of a camera. So all you got to do is put your mind to it and just go live. It doesn't matter where or how. Go live. It doesn't matter with what microphone, with what camera. Just go live with your cell phone. Your cell phone, nowadays, cell phones are, are really expensive, right? You got a $1,000 cell phone in your pocket. That has a good camera and a good microphone. It does. And sometimes better than a laptop. So why not just go live with that? Just use it. If you want to convey and you want to share your message with the world, just, you know, think of it like that way. You've done it a thousand times. This is one more time. And people are not even looking back at you. So how easy is that? You're talking to a lens, to a piece of tech. Mm -hmm. Forget about the viewers. Viewers will come with the journey. You won't get a thousand viewers the first day, guaranteed. You'll get maybe one. <laughs> so don't worry about it. As that is such a good point. The first time I went yeah. live on my uh, my YouTube channel, so I'd like set this day that was going to be my first live stream. Uh, and I wasn't expecting, you know, I'd literally got no subscribers anyway. You know, I'd literally just started it. So it was just the first time exactly. going live. But, you know, nobody watched it for the whole the whole time that I was <laughs> live. So I wasn't, you, I think people have this idea that, you know, oh, there's going to be, like you say, millions of the people potentially out there watching could be you. watching. But no, nobody's watching. <laughs> and then the funny oh, thing well. is, the the longer you do it with the the sort of the way that the community sort of builds up, you get to know the people who you you're talking with and or who are watching rather. And talking to friends, it just becomes yeah, it's uh, it's it's so true. <laughs> Well, it's been, uh, I can't believe it, it's nearly uh, top of the hour again. So uh, thank you so much for coming and, and you, speaking and, and sort of sharing the uh, the process because, like I say, I've been in uh, admiring what you've been doing uh, so much with uh, with your consistent approach. Same here, brother. <laughs> Same here. You're doing videos, I'm doing, you know, your short content during the day. Believe me, I've seen you throw like two videos in two days. It's like, wow, wow. 30-minute <laughs> videos in two days. <laughs> <laughs> well that that's the no edit thing that's the other thing about live streaming is 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 if you can get good at live streaming then you can or get over the, the the sort of camera side of thing with live streaming then it's only another step to uh just actually press i've probably got those the wrong way around really but just to press the record button and just record it live i mean that's exactly. that's the reason why i do all of my things in one take is just to uh to be able to just say right i'm going to sit down record it and then it's done <laughs> no Man. no editing after the fact <laughs> amazing yeah but th like, once again thank you so much for coming on and uh taking the time it's honor, been, uh, man thank you for having me i appreciate it i'm really honored to be here and um hi to all your people <laughs> thank you very much and obviously links to all of the uh, places where you can find uh, dr elo are down in the description in the show notes if you're listening to this on the podcast if you are listening definitely go and check out the uh, recording of this it's posted to youtube as well and you'll be able to go and if you want to have a look and see uh, the sort of behind the scenes where uh, Elo was sharing his uh, studio and showing uh, all of his setup 
it, you really do need to see it because you've got such a, a cool setup, Elo. I love the uh, the background that you've Thank got you, going man. on there as well. It's uh, It looks fantastic. Appreciate that. Thanks uh, once again. And so next week in the next episode, I'm going to be talking with uh, James Hicks. Uh, James is an engineering technologist, a thought leader, an entrepreneur, advocate, and curator of cr uh, creative content, and just another all-round nice guy, just like Elo. Uh, and I'll be getting his perspective on the technolo technological advances uh, that have had a positive impact on live streaming. It's sure to be an insightful conversation. Uh, you're going to want to hear it and... I would say <laughs> definitely tune in same time next week or uh, be sure to look out for it in your podcast player of choice. In the meantime, have an absolutely wonderful week ahead and we'll see you all very soon.